Hello and welcome to this Kerbal Space Program 2 Exploration Mode video. In this one, we have to go do a lot of stuff in Minmus, whereas the first episode we went to the Mun and landed there and it was all fine and dandy and it was a lot of fun. If you want to check out that video or any other one in the playlist, check the playlist or in the description you'll find those as well. But first off, we need to go and bring a probe to Minmus because we're finding some strange monuments on each one of the moons. First off, got to hand in a little mission here being the exit Kerbin's SOI and launch a satellite missions. Just a bunch of little ones dabbled in, dabbled in, dabbled in, doubled in here um, for some extra science points. But right away here, we are just kind of finishing up a few things. And now we're getting our encounter with Minmus set up just right. And as I come in here closer and closer, we want to get nice and close and down near our periaps do a quick little retrograde burn to bring it nice and close and we have bad signal completed which was get an orbit around minmus and it's 400 science points which is a lot and pretty quickly here i noticed that the science points really are a big deal from the missions now it's not just from doing the experiments but it's really 50 50. Uh, so you have to make sure you're following up with those missions so now we're getting our uh I think this is our, yeah, our geosynchronous or our keosynchronous or whatever. Uh, and you can see here that with this orbit, it stays locked on the planet in a specific place. This is a very useful orbit. We use this a lot in real life. And here I am. I'm going to launch basically the exact same configuration as the the Mooner or Munner lander. Um, because I figured if it had enough to go do things on the Mun, it will definitely have enough juice to go and land us on Minmus as well. But of course, this time it went a lot less... Uh, well, a lot more to plan than it did the first time. So here we are boosting away, getting away from Kerbin, and making our way over to our tiny little blue moon. <laughs> getting rid of all those fairings, getting rid of all that stuff, and now we are getting ourselves just trimming that maneuver down and close to Minmus. Getting it a li little bit more equatorial. I don't like coming in way over top of the moon. Here's a really nice shot as we come in from the side. and do our retrograde burn to slow ourselves down. And you can see right at the very top of the moon there, a little yellow dot, and that is actually the place we need to go. And so I get Valentina ready for her mission by switching her over from the, well, what, what I should have done is moved her from the command module over to the lander, um, but because she was already in the lander, my brain crosswired and I moved her from the lander to the command module. So now all three Kerbins are inside the command module, which is not how this was supposed to go. And our lander is now completely devoid of any kind of control because there's nobody in there and no probe gore. So I'm going, uh, why can't I do anything? And then eventually I realized Valentina was sitting in the wrong vehicle. Oh man, that was, uh, it was something. So now I'm looking around trying to figure out where the heck that lander even went. I see those in the distance there, but I just assume that they're actually debris and that they're not the lander, uh, because I thought the lander would be a lot closer. But I can see it from here, and then I switch to the lander and I have a look. Okay, I can see the module, okay. And so I've got to make the long trek over with Valentina, boosting her little EVA packs away, getting closer and closer until I finally get visual confirmation and climb into the lander that will be making its final descent towards Minmus. As somebody who plays a lot of KSP, Minmus has a special place in my heart, especially because this is one of the first moons where you kind of realize like, oh, I don't need to just go to the Mun. Like this thing is super sweet. There's tons of different biomes here. It's got awesome little green lakes of, you know, whatever the heck it is. and. They used to have that really cool flavor text when you would get the surface sample from the uh, the sheets um, where it would tell you that you tried to eat it, which is kind of great. Um, so as we approach this giant crater, there is some kind of a blue glowing thing in the middle. And that is the monument itself. You can see this huge turquoise glowing crystal. I don't know if that's turquoise, aqua, I don't, whatever. But as I'm coming down here and slowing myself down, I was going to go land in the ground here. But then I, I get this terrible idea. Something goes through my brain when I see that hand reaching out, and I think, oh man, I want to land on that hand, but there just isn't quite enough control on this uh, this lander, so I'm just flipping around, trying to do all this stuff, and eventually I just, uh, yeah. 
So, uh, loading a quick save that I very wisely made, I'm able to come back here and give it another shot. And this time, I'm not going to be trying to land on a hand like an absolute lunatic. Um, which, honestly, you do need to be a little bit of an absolute lunatic to play a KSP, so... You know, I'm sure if you saw that hand reaching out, you probably would have tried the same thing. I, at least I hope you would. And, and in fact, if somebody does land on the hand, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to know that you did that. Uh, maybe I'll go back and give it another try. But here we are landing on the surface, and we can finally go back to Mission Control and let them know that we did find the monument, and it looks absolutely spectacular, awe-inspiring, and terrifying all at the same time. Planting a flag, waiting for daytime to have a good look, and holy cannoli, it is something to behold. The giant Kerbin man with, I think he's got like tentacles on his face if I remember correctly, and he's got a giant crystal coming out of his head. It, it's something. It is something, and it is, it's alluding to a greater mystery. But either way, we can go ahead and collect our 750 science for finding the monument. So thank you very much i'll be collecting that and moving along the next mission is a duna landing a duna landing is gonna be definitely a little bit tougher and in fact i do believe that will be coming up in the next episode but for right now there is more science to be gained so we need to come down here and land on the flats which i think is now called the ice sheet with a very nice soft landing Minmus is notoriously easy to land on. You don't even need landing legs. It is very, very easy to land on Minmus. So here we are. We'll grab ourselves some more science in the way of a little bit of a surface sample. And we'll hop back in the craft. And of course, why not go for a third biome? So here I am boosting over to the side so I can land on these slopes over here and get yet another chunk of science from these. So this was a bit more of a perilous landing as the pitch on this little hill is a bit more than I expected. And we do not, like I said, have very good control on this little lander. It, you know, the gimbal on the on the engine is not very high, if I, I'm correct. And also it doesn't have a ton of reaction we all control. So a little bit tricky, but no problem. Eventually we do land and hop down and grab just a little bit more science and get back on the vehicle Last but not least, we just need to get up here and rendezvous with our command module, which was not too hard yet again. I just made it very easy. No docking required. Just get up there, get nice and close, do a little target retrograde burn to kill our relative velocity, look at our target, move towards it, rinse and repeat. Very, very easy to do that. And now we just need to swap Valentina back over to the command module so that she can make her way home with what looks like a good chunk of science on board. Between that and the missions, I think we're going to have actually quite a lot of science, so I guess we'll just wait and see in a moment here and see how much we end up with after all this. Because what you saw there wasn't everything. We also have the mission science as well. But last, all we need to do is just come on in here, do a little bit of an arrow capture. I like to put myself at like 35 kilometers so we don't come in too steep. Uh, but steep enough that we don't have to loop around the planet a bunch of times on arrow captures. Those are the most annoying things, is when you have to wait and wait and wait. So here we are. We end up with over 2,000. I can't quite see. It's a really small number right now. But we over oh, quite a lot. And it's enough to unlock quite a bit. So I unlock the nuclear propulsion because that is absolutely huge. It has an amazing ISP that will let us be super efficient and get to Duna in the very next episode. Which is going to be pretty awesome. I also go through here and unlock a ton of other stuff in the tier 2 category. And also we have to do this little mission with this little rover. I don't don't ask. It's, it's, it's kind of dumb. But anyways, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, hit like. If you want to see the next one, subscribe. And we'll see you there.